This is the most sophisticated obstacle avoidance autonomous drone made today. And mind, it's got suicidal tendencies. The Skydio 2 is an impressive drone with its ability to uh, miss objects. I did take it down this road with the truck. Had the snow, the road is fairly clear forward and aft, so I was trying to get the drone to track both in front of the vehicle and behind. It did really well. I came down to a curve here that's behind me, kind of a downhill with an open area, some trees off to my right, and I transitioned the drone from behind the truck to the front of the truck, going almost no miles per hour, and I could hear the drone fly off to my right to try to get in front of me, and then it struck one of these trees and disappeared. This is the third crash now with the Skydio. The first two were landing crashes. This is the first time it's been a flight crash. This is my second Skydio 2 in just a few months. I've also broken almost every rule that Skydio put out for this drone. The video I produce is for motorcycle instructors and for riders. To do that, I'm almost always solo and I need a drone that can fly itself. The Skydio 2, one of the major features is the fact I don't have to have a big controller. All I need is the drone, my phone, and the beacon. Now when you buy the drone, it's going to cost you $1,000 for the drone and for a battery and just a cord to charge it. But if you're doing it with motorsports or if you're doing any kind of high speed running horses, if you're into any of that kind of stuff, you're going to need the beacon. And because the battery is only good for about 20 minutes, you're going to need more batteries. Also, it has one major flaw. When it lands, it turns off all its obstacle avoidance. And I learned that when I was practicing with it and landed it just off target. The other thing I just discovered today is here's my Skydio. And you'll see one more broken prop and a battery sitting off of it. And what happened was when the bike or the drone ran out of battery, it auto loaded, well, auto landed and whatever was underneath it, it landed on. So it doesn't have a return to return to base or return to the original point that I expected to find the DJIs. Have to keep a track on the battery and make sure you land it before the drone decides it's time to land. This is where drones are supposed to fly. There's no branches, there's no twigs, there's no power lines, there's no cars. But the Sky DO2 takes us to a new level. I produce primarily motorcycle riding videos and mostly off-road videos. A couple of things that are really good to know about this drone as opposed to anything else. When I shoot with any other drone, I have to come up with audio for everything that I'm doing, which means that if, if I'm riding through the woods, I have to run a second camera. That second camera has to be collecting the audio so that I can get the engine sound, or I have to cover the whole thing up with music. This drone is the only one I know of that captures audio. I'm on my phone. I've got my, my Rode Wireless Go 2, 
which is attached to the jacket, and that's allowing a separate soundtrack. So I have one video track on the drone, which is what you're watching, and I have a soundtrack that's being recorded. Now I am using the Beacon, and for anybody considering this drone for motorsports use or anything that's really challenging, you have to have the Beacon. Otherwise, it's never gonna find you. Right now, the drone is trying to find me because I'm in the woods. It's lost the visual, it can only track what's on the beacon. Now, the drone is also not supposed to be flown around small twigs, and around me here currently are a lot of twigs. Now, these are pretty good. They have uh, pine needles on them, which make it easier for the drone to see. Turns out this drone has six full 360 degree cameras on it, and those 360 degree cameras are what are helping it not run into everything. So it's going up and over branches. And in fact, this drone's flying places. I could never fly my drone, even if I was running with a pilot with somebody helping. The beacon's critical. When I hook it up to the beacon, and then I also pair it to the phone for visual tracking, that's when you get the optimal results. But the beacon also allows the drone to pick up sound at this source and, this is cool, pay attention, point it at the drone and then go, park over there drone, park up there drone, and no matter where I point this, it tells the drone to go there and that's where it starts. Also, if I'm not using the phone or if I want to fly the drone with only the beacon, I can do that. And I can push on the screen and select where I want the drone to be around me, whether I want it to lead, whether I want it to follow me, stay at my side, I can do that from the beacon. Also, I can fly the drone manually with the beacon as well by using the buttons and controls on it. This is a must have. If you do decide the Sky DO2 is the right drone for you, the beacon and a couple of extra batteries are a must. The Sky DO2 has two propellers pointed up and two pointed down. What that means is if this drone lands, and it has no landing gear, it lands on its battery, when it lands, these props are spinning down into the grass or wherever you're landing it. It means the drone needs to land on a perfect surface, concrete or something solid. When they send this out to you, it comes in a hard container. That container has a basically a QR code that's on it. It's a symbol that it locks onto and allows it to land on that, and that'll protect the props. My preferred method is to reach up into the air and just pick the drone up out of the air and it works very well. Full disclosure, this drone was not sent to me to do free reviews for Skydio. They did not give me a discount, they did not rush the drone to me, and they have no intent of repairing the drone without me sending them more money. With, with the faults that Skydio does have, which is its suicidal landing tendencies, its relatively short battery life, it's not collapsible, but it is very thin. It does store and pack easily. And I mean, it's definitely not the drone I'm gonna pick if I wanna do drone type flying. If I wanna fly high altitude and do drone photography, this isn't the drone I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna go straight back to my, my DJI. I'm gonna grab my Mavic, I'm gonna fly that. But when it comes down to an autonomous drone that can track and follow me, that can help me create better content and educational content for riders, is still the best game in town. Perfect? Absolutely not. Flawed? Yeah, there's some silly flaws on this. And unfortunately, I'm afraid this isn't the last time I'm going to be sending it back for repairs. But I have a lot of hope and I'm looking forward to the future with this to make some really good content. Whatever you decide, just go in knowing what you're gonna get. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe, leave comments down below. And if you really like what I have on the channel, please jump onto Patreon, throw a little support each month, help the channel keep going. Thanks for watching.